It is not new that ethical behavior and integrity increases profitability and attract talents, the right talents. That is one of the responsibilities we have as business leaders. And with that, there are frequently seen pitfalls in organizations sabotaging the main vision, the purpose, and the initially good will to have a bigger impact. Some of these most common pitfalls on ethical behavior are on spot in today's episode. Good to have you here. Corporate integrity, fraud, non-compliance, and cybersecurity. Would you like to understand the root causes, detect threats, and take measurements to protect the most precious assets? As a leader, you need to be prepared and stay actionable in the event of an incident. Sonia Sternemann talks in her podcast, The Human Factor. Corporate integrity matters. To leaders and entrepreneurs who want to have impact, foster corporate integrity, and act as role models. As an international expert for corporate governance and integrity, entrepreneur, and independent board member, she knows the challenges. Let her inspire you. Welcome back to this new episode of the podcast, The Human Factor, Corporate Integrity Matters. You might be an integrity enthusiast, a business leader, a corporate integrity council, or on your way there. I'm your mentor when it comes to corporate integrity with impact, founder of Corporate Integrity Concepts and the Corporate Integrity Academy. With the vision to protect and secure assets, reputation and actionability, yours and the one of your organization. Why? because integrity matters. And now let's dive into the question of what common pitfalls of organizations are on ethical behavior. And what is even more important, how to bring that understanding back and implement the first action steps. I'm convinced that with the awareness of the importance regarding ethical behavior, a lot of troubles can be eliminated at the source. But this is just the first step. With having an understanding what the pitfalls are, it becomes also obvious what measurements and sections would be to protect the organization's assets and the corporate culture. Therefore, isn't it worth to take care of it? The topic of ethical behavior was raised in a recent conversation I had with clients in the financial services environment. Actual media coverage of what went wrong in the financial services industry are high and news come up on a daily basis. We all know that smart people are leading, steering and deciding. But what goes wrong again and again? When I mention only one scandal, the effect is that 99.9% .9 of listeners feel not related to it. It is too far away. We are not attached to it. Maybe in special cases, if it is the financial place of your country, we feel a little bit more on spot. But that's another story. Nevertheless, I would like to invite you to put yourself into the position of being a business leader, or even better, being the responsible leader in the next big case and scandal which will happen. Just as an exercise and see what it does with you, with your team and with your organization. How does it feel like being on a sinking boat? We know that the responsibility is on boards, C-level and management. And when I investigate incidents, there is hardly a case where these levels of responsibility are not involved. More than two-thirds of the large material fraud cases are conducted um, by those levels. Let's go back to something more tangible, sports. For those playing golf, might have in mind what it means to have a good etiquette on the course. Especially here in Switzerland, you are not allowed to play without having absolved specific training on that. Already the juniors are trained on it and the misbehavior is sanctioned very strictly. Before they have their handicap, they are sharpened and shaped on their etiquette. Bringing that back to the corporate world, I would like to bring in the idea of setting the tone right at the beginning. Often this is done with handing out the code of conduct in paper, hoping that it is understood. But this is never enough to shape and sharpen ethical behavior. Let's talk about the roots of integrity and ethical behavior. And if you 
will ask your peers in the management team, board of directors, or within your professional association. None of those would admit that she or he works for a company which is unethical and does not care about integrity. But with the use cases I experienced over the last three decades, I must conclude that there are companies hardly being able to create and maintain a corporate culture which fosters ethical behavior and integrity. Different KPIs, the key performance indicators, underline the result and will be discussed with our clients to ensure that if profitability and attracting talents are on their target list, the right actions can be taken and measurements implemented. The roots of integrity and ethical behavior are found in the corporate culture. There are plenty of reasons that even organizations with great intentions struggle with integrity issues, but there are a few pitfalls which could be eliminated to start with. And these are the ones I have on my focus for today's episode. How often do I ask employees not ma no matter on which level of hierarchy. What the mission or higher purpose of the company is they work for? Often, the answer goes the direction of letting me know that there must be a mission statement somewhere on the intranet they have access to. I'm not playing the employees answering my questions. Not at all. If the board of directors and management is not able to, trans to transport the mission, which is key to align ethical behavior to the values, we have already lost our pole position to become an organization with strong, e strong ethical roots. The values derived from the mission and purpose define the ethical behavior and understanding of integrity in a corporate culture. And this already leads me to, to the first question. Do you detect any misalignment between the company values and employee behavior? And I'm not asking for the employee only, but also on the management behavior. And if so, can you detect the root causes? You already know that this question is part of the take-home assignment and we come back to this later on again. Change perspective and imagine what would be possible if values would increase value. And here we are um, talking about the next topic, setting the right or even the wrong KPIs. We already mentioned the KPIs a few sentences before, as we often use these supporting the discussion with our clients. KPIs are measurable, comparable and therefore important when we talk about ethical behavior and leadership. A key element in the different approaches and methods within corporate integrity concepts too. What if we discuss on the wrong parameters? How important is quality and how is it going to be measured and rewarded? The human behavior is quite simple in this setting. What gets measured gets done. What gets rewarded has priority. Are we rewarding productivity before quality? These two parameters are contraindicative in most cases. The higher the productivity, the less quality you can expect. As employees are part of the most valuable assets a company has, it is also clear that they are smart and understand how they tweak the figures or how they could tweak the figures. I'm not saying that they are doing it. Creative accounting is not far to achieve what they are measured by. It is obvious that quality needs to be far more rewarded than productivity and being part of the overall implementation strategy for a culture of corporate integrity. Another KPI which needs to be focused on is profit, which goes along with productivity too. Increasing the pressure to the sales organization on cost of ethics will cost the company in the long run. Therefore, I encourage leaders to consciously follow a profit with ethics mindset and walk the talk. Incentive matters. Check whether you set the right ones. Because that's crucial. And the third one, the third pitfall is that good corporate governance is not lift. 
You remember when I started a few minutes ago with the categorization where the topics belong to, the board, sea level and management. That is also the reason why this last common pitfall is an evergreen. We all know how important good governance is. The hottest topic for ethical behavior is how the governance of the company is left. I know there are companies paying a lot of money to outsource their governance, which is definitely not possible. Of course, there are differences already in the setup of the company's governance, but more important is how it is implemented and lived. Not the best structure on paper does work when it is undermined in daily business. So implementing these first three pitfalls into your take-home assignment would mean that you, together with your team, reflect on first, how is our governance lift? You can also compare what it is stated in your org chart, rules and regulations, and compare it, what really happens. The second one, what are the KPIs we have set in place and do they measure what needs to be measured? Are these the right ones? Do we need other KPIs? And the third one, do you detect any misalignment between the company values and employee, employee behavior or management behavior? And if so, can you detect the root causes? With these three questions for yourself, your team and your next discussions with peers will give you insights and indications for potential measurements and sanctions. Which also leads me to the perspective that governance and business-driven compliance can be seen as the secret weapon. To be honest, sometimes it is really unfair for what compliance must stand in. There are still too many organizations behaving as if compliance can solve everything. Legal counsels are hired because business does not want to take on responsibility. Is that the solution? Definitely not. We all know that being responsible for regulatory compliance, integrity, ethical behavior, etc., compliance and ethics are not the same. In a nutshell, compliance assures that the rules and regulations are followed. Ethics and integrity assures that the organization's behavior is in line with the mission and the values set by themselves. Effective ethics and integrity go beyond following rules and regulations. My personal wish for you is that at least these three pitfalls are part of an upcoming discussion within your leadership team and with your peers. Of course, not all at the same time, as I am completely aware of the fact that starting such a discussion might be a challenge for some teams and organizations. But not starting is not an option, as the future is waiting and ready for corporates acting with integrity. But I also have to disappoint you. These few pitfalls are not the only ones, but a good start to look at and to work on. And I promise we will also talk about other pitfalls and other solutions in one of the next episodes. This was episode number eight of the human factor. Corporate integrity matters. Following the belief, corporate integrity secures and empowers individuals and organizations. Would you like to learn more, meet peers and getting qualified? So visit the website Corporate Integrity Concepts or Corporate Integrity Academy. Or do you think this podcast could be interesting for someone you know? Sharing is caring and we are always happy to welcome your peers to our community. And if you like this episode, subscribe and don't miss any of the future ones. The show notes are, of course, enriched with relevant information and your connection via any of the social media channels is highly appreciated and will be answered. Promised. And please do not forget, topics of your interest or interview partners are highly welcome. Just send me a note on any of the channels you know. That's it from my side. I thank you for listening. My name is Sonja Stierniemann and I'm your host. Stay curious, actionable and a role model. Take care and goodbye.